hello and welcome to whatever it is that this is. I'm your host, David. Same person as last time because it would be weird if I wasn't. Um, here, today we're going to be talking about uh, random containers. We're going to be talking about triggering sounds uh, that are a little... Well, variable, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of examples today. One of the examples will be triggering the same footstep sound, and then one will be triggering multiple footstep sounds. So first up, the clip with uh, just the same footstep sound. It is exactly the same every time. There's not a lot of variance. Instead, we expect something a little more like this. Now with that example, you can see the slight variation actually leads to a lot less repetitive nature of the sound effect. Now, you'll have heard stuff before uh, that's a little bit different, but it's important to kind of go through and look at, you know, how do we make things feel a little bit more variable, re-trigger a little bit, have a bit more variety because that variety leads to less ear fatigue, which means our players can keep playing the game for a little bit longer, take a little bit more uh, investment from the sound itself. Now, those character models specifically are from this pack here by David Gret. Gret, sorry, mate. But we won't actually need them specifically for this tutorial. Today we're going to start with the idea of placing a, making a container for your sounds, making uh, slots for sounds to be put into, creating some sounds to put into those slots, and then triggering them as you'd expect. So first up, we're going to jump into Unreal Engine. Now when we're in Unreal, we're going to make a new folder for each of these lessons, but you don't have to stick to this hierarchy necessarily because I encourage you to incorporate your own meta sounds here. Inside that folder, we need to make a new uh, meta sound source, okay, uh, which is going to be the basic thing that we're going to do for every, um, for every element here. Inside our meta sound source, we're going to use the same wave asset player that we used in the last episode, uh, but we're also going to add something in this variables container here. We've said the word container a fair few times, so I want you to hit the plus, make a new variable, call it audio container, and move forward from there. Inside that, you want to click audio, but it's actually not what we're looking for here. We're looking for wave assets, uh, which are sound waves or wave assets that have been loaded into Unreal, which is slightly different to a sound, which would be a buffer of, of elements. Clicking and dragging from audio controller out into the meta sounds window will give you this reference to that container. And then we're going to use a wave player and we're going to try and hook it up. Now, immediately we'll need to hook up our on play so that something happens, our on finished so that we know that it's over, and our output for our audio stream itself. Now, after that, you're going to try and connect up the audio container to the wave asset, but remember they're not the same type. Now, instead, what we'll need to do is go inside this container and pull out one of those entries, uh, which we can use the get function from the array. Now, inside that, we're going to be able to connect up our wave asset to a new element, which is really cool because we can actually use this. I'm gonna connect up the on trigger so that this also triggers, which means we are pulling out the index zero of the audio container and passing it on to the wave player, which then plays it. Now you can see if I open up the indexes, I don't actually have anything in index zero, so nothing will play until I add this sound here. Now we have a sound that's playing and it's pretty much a more convoluted version of what we've done in the past, but we're gonna change that. Inside the index box, we can change this to reference any address inside the array uh, for or the, the container uh, here. And even though we don't have an in index one, we only have index zero, we're still able to add to it. There won't be any errors. We just won't really hear any sound. So you can either right click uh, to make new indexes or hit the plus button to make new indexes. And I'm going to put the same sound in, in all the indexes at the moment. But we're going to move away from that in a second and we're going to design some sounds. So with this accessing arrays at different indexes, we need to be really comfortable with great creating new sizes of things and looking at different elements. But we also don't really want to specify the index because that doesn't really help us here. So instead of the get node, we're going to use the random get by just pulling off the audio control, uh, the audio container and adding a random get. And this will look at all of the things that we have loaded. And instead of picking 
the one that we've asked for, which is useful in other circumstances. It's just going to pick a random one. So this will now go through and pull a random element out of one of those elements. Now they all sound the same for us at the moment. Uh, so it's not super helpful for us this way, but we're going to change that as well. When I remove a couple of these indexes here and add in some blank ones or remove the reference just to show you that you can, you know, change this up as much as you like. Hitting play multiple times will mean sometimes we get the sound and sometimes we get the, no the nothing, the none sound. Uh, now it's really important when you are using arrays that you don't leave things empty like this because it's, it's just a headache uh, and this isn't really the right way to accomplish the random container thing. Now, you'll also be able to pull off the weights tag and add an, another array for that, which is basically the probability index of each random weighted variable. Now, you don't have to use a weights variable and it will just assume that all the indexes are the same. But here, I'm going to add some so that they add up to one. And when I, when I hit play a few times, you should hear that changing. Now, there's a few other elements here, like the seed for where it starts and the fact that it has no repeats. So you can kind of cull the previous entries if you're working with voiceover. Now what? Okay, so we've created something that does play each of the variations, but we need to move into uh, Reaper now. We need to create some sounds to play and uh, we're gonna load them back in and have a bit of a look. Now, I bought some new assets, so I had to sit through this, uh, which was fun. But then we went into uh, Reaper and- ah, no. That sounds awful. <laughs> So we need to find some sounds that actually work here. Now, all of this is purely scene setting things and I'm using uh, NVK Create, Nick Von Canel's uh, amazing Reaper plugin here that will uh, go through my whole library and pull out some sounds. I'm looking for stirrups and spurs and some, some kind of UI element sort of stuff. Uh, so we generate some sounds here and we're looking for some things that maybe don't have too much repetition. It's important with random elements that you do look to trim them. And, and when I'm playing a few th through a few of these at the moment, I'm not really finding the sounds that I'd like. So I'm going to go with something a little more layered. Um, turning the variations up. So I'm going to get some more numbers to play with um, or some more variations to look at and adding up the elements, turning down the items. It's a really fantastic tool if you haven't checked it out. It'll go through, generate a whole bunch of variations for me, just, just for scene setting stuff. This isn't for anything in particular, but just to have fun to work with. Now, when you're working with random things in games or random streams, streams, you wanna go through and remove tonal elements or really detailed repetition. The brain is really bad. Um, well, no, it's not really bad, <laughs> but it's, it's, it gets really locked into uh, working with very specific tonal elements. So you want to remove as much of that as possible so that you don't pick it up. Now, we only have eight random sounds here. So I'm going to quickly go through this and just edit up some of the sounds. But knowing that, you'll have whatever process you want yourself. Now, to export them, I'm just going to use this Reaper action. It's going to create the regions for each of these variations. And then from there, I can export them all out. So I'm creating my variations. I've uh, gone to export all my project regions and I'm gonna have a folder here that I'll be able to drop in. Now, back in Metasounds, uh, or back in Unreal Engine, I should say, I'm gonna make a new folder for these audio files and I'm gonna drop my audio assets into that folder. You can see I get the little waveform display too and there's a handy waveform editor that I won't cover in this lesson, but we may use it in future as well. So now we have some assets. It's time to actually plug them back in. Thankfully, we've already set up our array, so it's a pretty easy thing to do by just going into the index, changing it up, loading in our new sounds, and we can stop at any point here. Now, I'm going to load in all eight because I made all eight, and I want to use all eight if I made them. So I'm plugging in each of the indexes. Now you can highlight all the assets and drop them into this as well, uh, but just to show you and get a little bit more familiar with how you use um, meta sounds to move around here. Whenever I hit spacebar now, play is going to pull a random sound, which mission accomplished, I guess. Uh, now in play mode, because we haven't set up a behavior for this, I'm going to really, really quickly just throw a trigger repeat on this so that it will just kind of spin up and do its own thing so we can just have a listen to the sound because we've pretty much achieved what we want to achieve at this point. So from here, I'm going to hook up a trigger repeat. I'm going to turn the period up to, I don't know, half a second, something like that. Um, and, oh, sorry, half a second. And now when I hit play, it's just going to endlessly trigger whatever this is. 
Okay, so back in Unreal, uh, in the editor view, we can drop that meta sound source. So we can get rid of the previous sound source that we found in the previous tutorial, uh, drop in our new sound source and set up a new attenuation or set up the previous attenuation again, just so it is spatialized because that's cool and hit play. And as we fly around, we hear ambience. I'm not totally sure what it is, but I, I kind of like the sound. Um, and I think it sets us in the right sort of frame set for, or mindset for this. Um, you can see I'm using the Switch, uh, Switch Tech Audio Inspector here, but you can also use au.debug.soundcues or probably many other uh, profilers and different tools. So thanks for sticking around. It's a pretty basic concept, but it's worth seeing the process go all the way from start to finish, especially for very slight variations or things that you have to hear a lot or listen to a lot or be a part of for a long time. I think it's really important to look at ways that you can add that variation, especially because it's relatively cheap uh, to add extra sound files and you'll get a lot less cognitive load on the player to have to sort of sit there and listen to the exactly the same footstep sound over and over again, or the same sword swing or, or really anything. Uh, this was fun. I think for me, it was, who knows it was, what it was for you. Uh, I'm not that prescriptive. So <laughs> hopefully you had a good time. Um, if you would like, follow me at Dweaver Audio on Twitter, uh, or subscribe to this channel, I suppose. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you next time.